Hi, this is Lee from Heidel Design. Today we're going to be taking a look at iDisplay, which is an app for the iPad and iPhone. In particular today we're going to be looking at using iDisplay to use the iPad as a secondary display for your main Mac. So uh, first you're going to go to the iDisplay website at shapeservices.com and there are two pieces to this. There is a piece of software that you need to download and install on your Mac and there is an app that you need to purchase from the App Store for $4.99. Once you have downloaded and installed the software, uh, what it basically does after a restart is it tricks your Mac to thinking that there is always an external monitor attached. So right now uh, we are not paired with the iPad and you can see that it's giving me um, this screen and showing that there is a, an external monitor when the, in fact there is not. One thing you want to do, and they emphasize this over and over again in the documentation, is make sure you unclick mirror displays. Uh, if you have mirror displays selected, it's going to change the main um, size of your Mac display, and it's going to make things very difficult for you. Okay, uh, and then you also want to go over to the App Store and pick up iDisplay, the um, the app that kind of goes along with this pairing piece that you will then install on your iPad. Okay, once you're all there, we're going to go ahead and we are going to start up iDisplay now. Okay, we're going to do a really bad edit here and kind of cut over to some handheld footage. Uh, ScreenFlow, the software that I use to record uh, my screencasts, really did not like switching over to the display on the iPad probably due to the resolution size but the app kept crashing so in the interest of time we will just uh, shoot this remotely so here you'll see uh, this is my main Mac and we'll see all of the the browser windows we had open there before and over to the side is the mirror is the uh, connected iPad uh, using iDisplay so after you launch the iDisplay app it's going to take 10, 20 seconds to fully open and um, you will then go to your iPad and open up the iDisplay app there and they will attempt to sync up with each other. Now so far I've had pretty good luck with that process. I've read some reviews online where people think that there are some issues with that. It happens for me but it, it takes upwards of probably 30 seconds for the entire connection to happen so it's pretty slow. Speaking of slow uh, the actually moving objects around on the iPad is a bit of a chore. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and I'm going to uh, grab a bonjour window in iChat and I'm going to drag it over. I'm going to drop it off right here in the middle. And you can see that it's still moving. It's been five, six seconds more since I actually took my mouse off the window. So the lag is pretty significant on this. Uh, when you're moving objects around, uh, when you're typing, when you're scaling, this display is really only suitable for um, items that are going to remain fairly static, um, that aren't going to have a lot of updating or refreshing uh, in this view. Again, I'll just show you just a little bit of the cursor motion. So I'm going to move my cursor right. I'm going to move it up, down. It's completely all over the place and left. Actually knowing where the cursor is going to end up is probably the biggest problem with us, especially when it comes to you know fairly technical tasks like grabbing browser chrome, um, clicking and dragging objects. So I'm going to drag my window back over and you can see kind of the difference now where you know obviously I don't have these lined up but the slowness factor when we're dragging items between. So, kind of in summation, it's definitely serviceable for some tasks, um, but it is buggy and it's probably not going to be a, a great solution for everybody. Um, the app does crash on occasion. I think that this is the uh, third time that we've used it and uh, the other two times we've both had crashes uh, doing that little simple demo. You can also see here on the iPad display, there is some kind of streaking 
across, look, if you look in the white areas there in the resolution pane, um, due to, I guess, artifacting being left on the, on the screen from, from moving other objects around. So definitely not elegant, uh, definitely probably not the way anyone envisioned actually using an iPad as a second display, but it technically works. That's iPad. Uh, that is the iDisplay app for the iPad mirroring displays between uh, an iMac and iPad device. Oh, and as a quick addendum, I did want to point out that once items are on the iPad, they are actually clickable, so you can move them around via touch. It is just slow. Great, just want to make sure I pointed that out as well in case anyone was wondering about the actual touch screenification of it. It does, again, it, it does work. It's just probably not something you actually want to do.